From the Gospel of John, chapter 10. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them. And the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. The reading of the word. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the listening ears of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our neighbors have started a new mission project in their family. Every few months, they adopt very small puppies who are on their way to becoming service animals. They keep them for a week, and it is really intense for them, a really intense week of work, but they are the cutest puppies you've ever seen. So it's a real joy for us to live next door to all that work. This last pair were really adorable, and they were following the mom around, and and John said, they're following you everywhere you go. And she said, of course because I'm the one that feeds them. We're like that too. We follow the leaders that show us they care, the ones that literally or figuratively feed us. We recognize their voice. When Jesus tells us he is the shepherd, he is telling us that we can trust his voice. He listens to us. He hears us. He did that all the way through the Gospels, meeting people where they were, hearing their stories, stepping into the painful places to cure their blindness, to feed their hunger, to show them that they mattered, even if the rest of the world thought they should be invisible. People who were totally powerless by the world's standards, they mattered to Jesus. He spoke the language of the people, and they recognized his voice. Jesus' sheep responded by knowing his voice and following him, knowing him, recognizing his love for us. His voice is not like other voices. It doesn't lead us to the ways of the world. We don't hear from him how to be rich or how to be more powerful than those other people. We hear that we are beloved. We don't hear that his love for us makes us somehow better than other people because we hear that he loves them too. All of us, sheep of the pasture, looking toward the one who will lead us on our way. Have we heard his voice calling out to us? To hear his voice We need to listen. We need to make space for him to be heard by praying, by listening for the word of God present in the Bible. The Bible is not just a book. It's a living story of God's love for us that will never end. We keep reading it, and we find ourselves and our issues reflected in it, even though it's more than 2,000 years old. What helps you hear the voice of Christ to you today? Is it silence? Is it music? Worship? Prayer? Being in community? If we believe his voice is calling out to us, we can make the space to hear his invitation 
I've shared with some of you before the meditation I find really helpful when I'm trying to hear and listen for God. It comes from Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still In that verse, I hear God's invitation to us to listen, to be, to slow down, to breathe, to notice the glory of God's creation, to be thankful for the life we've been given, to be prepared to follow Jesus wherever he leads us. What does it look like when people follow the voice of Jesus, the voice that calls us to see people other than ourselves, to care even when it doesn't seem to benefit us in the short run? Like many of you, I've been disturbed to see the videos that keep surfacing of the way people have been treated on airplanes. It often feels as if the passenger has become no more than the dollar value of the ticket. Maybe that's why this story got my attention. A woman was on a plane, obeying all the rules, turning off her cell phone, waiting for the plane to go. It had pulled away from the gate. The flight attendant came to her and asked her her name, and she told her, and they moved back to the gate and they asked her to get off the plane. And she didn't know why, but she did. And when she got off, they told her that her husband had been trying to get a hold of her, that their son had been in an accident and was really injured. And they took her to a private waiting room, and they changed her ticket to the place where her son was. And then a couple days later, they called to see how they were doing. Her son made it after a long period of time. I think that's what it looks like to hear Jesus' voice. To be in the middle of work where you're supposed to care about money and and being on time and, and all those things, and instead you stop to care about one person and be with them in their time of need. A stranger. Listening to Jesus calls us to do the right thing for each other and for everybody else. So what invitation does the voice of Christ want to offer to you today? 
One of them is right there. We get invited to the table, to the banquet of the kingdom of God. It's a feast that transcends time and space. We will be fed body and soul, nourished and nurtured, filled up to follow him. We are here because Christ calls us and we know his voice. We may know that clearly, or it may have been a subtle whisper that woke us up and brought us here today. May we keep listening and seeking and loving the sound of his voice. In Jesus' name, amen.